Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, we're taking a look at a surprise that I found in my PFSense server. I did a video a little while back about my custom-built PFSense server and what I do with it. You can check that out up at the top right on the card. So the last time that I popped open the hood for the PFSense server, I found some burn marks that my mass cool intake fans had left on the top part of the case. This server is pretty much up 24 seven. It's my main network firewall, router, DHCP server, DNS server, and pretty much everything that runs my entire network. I really need this to stay online and healthy. After the initial shock of seeing that the mass cool fans had basically self-destructed, I reached out to Noctua to take a look at some of their NFA8 flex fans, the 80 millimeter version, to fix the situation. For a server this important, Noctua fans are one of the top choices. I definitely trust that when they say these fans should run for the next six years at 24 seven operation, that they will. We're gonna take a look at the damage and get the new fans installed, then take a look at the temperature reduction from the CPU. Before we get into all of that, we're gonna take a look at today's video sponsor real quick. The video sponsor is Chillix. If you're still scooping out your feline friend's litter box, you definitely need to check out the AutoEgg self-cleaning litter box from Chillix. This auto-cleaning box tracks each visit and the amount deposited. This will give you an idea if everything is average or if something has gone wrong lately. With an attractive and compact design, this is definitely worth checking out. Links will be in the description below. Back to the fried fans. So I'm not exactly sure when these mass cool fans actually seized up and overheated, but I did notice that the CPU temperatures went up by about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, which did help tip me off. For this time of year, that type of temperature difference is quite a bit actually. The ambient temperature is somewhere between 60 to 70 degrees. So that 10 to 15 degrees is going to become quite a bit more during the summer months. The heatsink on this CPU motherboard combo is passive, so all of the airflow in the case actually depends on the front intake fans. That explains why the temperature increased so much. The NFA8 flex fans that I'm installing today run the Noctua SSO2 bearing type. That bearing type is found in most of the Noctua fans currently. These have a rated mean time to failure of over 150,000 hours. And as I mentioned earlier, they're backed by the six year warranty. In terms of performance, these fans have a maximum rotational speed of 2000 RPM and they can push 29.6 CFM at a static pressure rating of about 1.96 millimeters to H2O. With two of these fans installed, there should be no issues getting enough air into this 2U case. Even at full speed, these fans are only putting out about 16.1 dBA. At 16.1 dBA, I can't hear these fans at all in the rack, not even a little bit. Even if I powered all of the other servers off and the PCs that I use for the studio, I still can't hear 16 dBA fans. 16 dBA is somewhere between normal breathing and probably a whisper conversation at a distance. These fans come with Noctua's low noise adapter, but I really didn't find that I needed it here. I will however keep that for a future silent build though. That is a nice touch that they always include those. These fans also consume less than one watt while in use, which is actually great because I'm trying to reduce my overall power budget in the rack. As always, these fans come with the rubber feet for the mounting points to re reduce vibration and overall sound. The install was a little bit different than a normal ATX PC case, but the idea is basically the same. Now that the fans are installed, let's take a look at the CPU temperatures. Right off the bat, there's an awesome 10 to 15 degrees Celsius drop. Right now, it's still colder where my rack is stored, but soon it'll be the summer months and that temperature drop will mean even more. If you're looking for smaller 80 millimeter fans and know that you need a good quality, good airflow, and good pressure fan, 
the NF8 flex fan is probably the one you're looking for. The fan comes in at around 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll have links out to that below, as well as my build list if you're interested to see more. If you're interested in seeing the PFSense server build, I'll link out to that in the description below, as well as the 4U VMware ESXi server build directly above it. I definitely recommend checking those out if you're into home lab setups. If any of you are running Windows 10 and you're out there cruising the web without AV, you'll definitely want to check out today's second video sponsor. With support for up to 10 PCs under one subscription, you can manage antivirus on all of your PCs, your parents' PCs, and maybe even your grandparents' PCs with Sophos Home Premium. The client is nice, sleek, and simple. The management completely takes place in a web portal, which is also a nice touch. The client does not have to be managed locally at all. You can start and schedule scans remotely and see what the results were on each PC from anywhere in the world. I personally use Sophos on all of my PCs. I like the flexibility and ease of use most. Links will be in the description below. Check it out for 25% off your first year subscription. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button. I create gaming PC and home lab tech videos every week. If this kind of stuff interests you, definitely get subscribed to the channel. You want to hit that bell icon too, so you get a notification each time a new video gets uploaded. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or on the website, samstechstuff.com.